Hello, Flight Gear users, developers. Um, I'm going to show a simple way that I found on how to um, separate an object, how to um, find uh, set the origin point of that object, so you don't have to deal with figuring out in Flight Gear where the center point is and just playing around with a bunch of numbers and stuff which I'll, I've seen a lot of people do and it probably takes quite a bit of time but I'm going to be using Blender and I've cleaned up the, the main area, the main work area by hiding some things and I deleted the main center cu the cube that's default in Blender so I'm just going to open up a file and this particular one is for space shuttle. I'm not going to load the UI because everyone has their own UI preferences and some are okay, some aren't. I just like to keep my own settings without having to change them so I always uncheck load UI. And this here, per if you have trusted source, any Python files that are tied into a blend file that you're working with will um, will execute. So I always treat everything untrusted by un keep leaving that unchecked. And just open the blend. Whoops, that was the wrong file. So let me do this again. I'm going to open the cockpit. And this I'm going to show how to get all the locations for each switch. I believe this is panel L2 on the space shuttle. And um, nothing's really been separated. This is all one object here. All the orange colored highlighted areas are all one object, so a lot would have to be separated in this mesh. And I'm just hitting T to clean up the work area a little bit. Now there's going to be some pauses as I'm doing some things because I have to hold the microphone up to my face because I'm using a new microphone. It's a dynamic microphone and I don't have a stand for it. So I have to hold it in one hand and have the mouse in the other, and if I have to hit the shift key, then I have to put my other hand down. So until I get a stand, you're, I'll, there's going to be some pauses in between me doing saying what I'm going to do and then actually doing it. So if you can bear with me. I'm going to make sure I'm not in edit mode, make sure it's in object mode. And for some reason the objects that are selected right now aren't showing the orange outline on, on them. I'm going to hit Z and then hit Z again and that'll turn off the texturing that's been applied and stuff. It doesn't remove it, it just turns it off in Blender. And I'm going to hit Shift. Whoops, I'm going to make sure the object that I want to work with is selected. I'm going to hit Shift H and those this is basically what I'm going to be working with. All the switches and buttons. And I'm going to work with these three that were on panel L1 or 2. I forget which panel it is, but it's panel L1 uh, or 2 on the shuttle. So I just zoom into those. Go into edit mode. Just select one of those. Vertices. Hit uh, shift L, oops, select vertice, <laughs> that's not working, is it control L? Yeah, it's control L to select the object, and then I can hit the period key on the number pad and it'll zoom in and set the rotation point. Um, version 2.7 uh, versions of of Blender, no matter what they are, from 2.7 up, something's wrong with the the way the rotation is, and some settings aren't set the way they were by default in 2.6 versions, so it's just weird how they 
miss little things like that. But right now, we're going to separate each of these switches from their base of rotation. This is the base of the rotation here. And we're just going to leave those alone. We're not going to play with those. So I'm just going to select this, Control L, hold down Shift, select the next couple switches, and hit Control L to select the um, only the switches that are going to be moving. Now I'm going to separate all these. Hide everything else. Shift H to hide everything but the selected object. Now I'm just going to, for the sake of this video, I'm just going to call this um, each one of these I'm going to rename and I'm going to call it uh, each one uh, S1, S2, and S3 just for the sake of this video even though those are the wrong names. <coughs> so, control L, P, separate to selection and do the same thing with this one. P, separate to selection. Now I'm going to tab out of edit mode. Rename this one to L2 dot S1. And I also rename the master. This is the object. And this little triangle selection. This is the mesh. I'm going to hit control V. Whoops. Go back over here, make it easy. Control C to copy. Control V to paste. Now they're the mesh and the object are named the same thing. You don't have to add the zero one or anything on the end. Because this is all for reference in Blender. And then this one's going to be S2, L1, S2. We'll do the same thing over here to the mesh, S2. And this one's going to be L1, S3, or L2, S3. Now, because the origin point is set the same as that entire object was before we separated everything. The origin point is going to be way off here, which is probably about a full meter. So if we rotate it, you'll see that the switch would rotate around the whole cockpit. And that's not what we want. So we're going to have to work on these. Um, select the switch that you want to find the center point, or change the origin point of. I'm going to turn off the x-ray thing. I'm going to select vertice mode. And I'm going to select all the vertices on the bottom of this switch. That'll make it so that's going to be the center point. That's going to be the origin point. And in, in order to get that, let me pull up the end panel by hitting the and oops, I got a tab out of here. I don't know why this isn't working. Anyways, it's supposed to be the end key. And then it'll po pop up this transform and all these other ones, so other informational panels. We're going to need transform and 3D cursor visible. Um, we're going to tab into edit mode. And since I already have those selected, I'm going to hit shift S, cursor to selected, tab out of edit mode, and see where the cursor is there now. I'm going to move the transform to that location, origin to 3D cursor. Now, 
if I rotate it, it's going to rotate around that instead of the previous where we pulled the object from. And you'll have to do the same thing for each one of these switches. Now, in order to get the axis of that rotation point, because if you see, it's at a weird angle. If we rotate it on the x-axis, it's going to twist. And that won't look good in flight gear. It's basically finding the a locating the axis the same way you would a fla uh, wing flap. So in order to do that, these two are on the one side of the axis, and these two vertices are on th the other side. Sometimes, depending on how, how detailed the model is, there may only be one vertice you have to select to get the, the location of it and stuff. But uh, since there's two, just select both of them, hit Shift S, cursor to selected, and write down this here because that'll be the one side of the axis that you have to set and then do the same thing for the other side shift s cursor to selected and that's going to be the next thing so with all that set and make sure the settings are on global and not local so you want global and over here in this tab i forget what it's called the scene the scene tab, you're going to want units to none, so you don't have to do any calculation of like imperial to metric or anything like that. <coughs> so this will automatically be in the units that Flight Gear uses. You can just plug those numbers right in and make note of the, of the minuses. That's going to be the center point of the object this point right here and the 3D cursor is going to be down here so you gotta distinguish between these two here the transform is going to be the rotation axis and the 3D cursor is going to be how you define that ax axis and I, I took a while to explain it in this video but it's once you get the hang of that it'll take you like 15 seconds or less for each object that you're doing and you can really fly through a whole bunch of stuff so I'm gonna go ahead and do that with the next two switches I'm just gonna just show it so you can see how fast it really is without talking or anything just like busting it out And I got the, all the information I needed to rotate that switch. So that's about how quick it is. It's probably around 15-20 seconds for each thing. Which I hope will be helpful to a lot of people working with uh, Blender and Flight Gear because I know a lot of people are just doing the stuff directly in Flight Gear and just trying to figure it out and winging it and stuff like that. But if you use Blender, it's really easy to, to find all that stuff. Thanks for watching.